Ben. He has read and studied and practised, and he would like to demonstrate to you some of the things, some of the skills he's grown over the past few years, Zeros. presenting a work in progress. Ladies and gentlemen, Stuart Davis! <laughs> Thank you, Ashton. Thank you, everyone. Good evening. Uh, yeah, I am uh, going to show you some card tricks if that's okay. We're thin two brown pipe here uh, for the magicians in the room. Um, but, um, and also, I'm an amateur magician, so none of these card tricks are my own. They're all um, card tricks from other magicians, uh, far more famous and far more, uh, far better than I am, I should say. So, the first trick I'm going to show you is one by uh, the famous one of the grandfathers of magic, Di Vernon, the Canadian magician Di Vernon. The magicians in this room know who Di Vernon is, but um, for anyone who doesn't know who he is, he is uh, synonymous with card magic, with magic in general, with blinking rings, cup and balls, card magic. Um, and there isn't a magician in the world who doesn't use some of his techniques, at least. Um, so it starts, as all good card tricks do, with a selection. So let me have a, 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 a mark. Thank you very much. Yes, sir. And if you wouldn't mind, could you just pop your... Uh, Signature on the face. Uh, the face, yeah, choose. <laughs> <laughs> right, okay, so I'm just going to put the cards a little cut and cut your shuffles. Now, you know the usual plot of a card trick like this. The spectator chooses the card, they sign the card, and the magician finds the card magically from uh, the chaos of a shuffled deck. Well, that wasn't enough for Di Vernon. Di Vernon wasn't satisfied with just the chaos of a shuffled deck. Found it quite straightforward. So what he would do is he would split the deck in half and turn over one half of the deck so that we've got one half face up and one half face down. And then, you can tell it's going to, you know what's going to happen next, he shuffled them together. Right, the side so we've got you know a mess, you know, a mixed deck of face up, face down cards, um, no particular uh, rhyme or reason. Um, it's what's usually referred to as a, as a casino's nightmare um, because you know you can kind of see you've got a bit of, bit of everything there. Sorry, I'm making a real mess of this. Anyway, right. So we've got we've got face up cards. We've got face down cards. We've even got some back-to-back -back cards. So the first thing I need to do to find Mark's card is yeah. straighten the deck out. Yeah, now it would take me a while to sit and do that manually and you'd all be bored within seconds. Um, but the Di Vernon method's quite easy. You use the magician's click, which is that. That straightened the deck out. Thank you. Um, and uh, anyway, I need to find the card as well. So to find the card, I just need to use the pen that Mark signed it with. And all I do is tap the deck three times. And now, hopefully, Mark's card should have revealed itself. All of the cards are now face down, with the exception of one card only. And I can see your signature, so I think it's the right card. Is that your card? It certainly is. Okay, so the next trick I'm going to show you is a little bit more contemporary. Well, it's a classic plot that some of the magicians in the ring will, will understand, um, but it's by a magician called, uh, called John Carey. Uh, this version is by a magician called John Carey. Um, but I'm going to need, to begin with, I'm going to need the four aces. So the first ace will be the, um, the ace of spades, which is about there. And then the ace of clubs is not far behind, somewhere around there. Now I need to find the ace of hearts, which should be somewhere in the middle by the time I'm done. Oops. It should be there. There's the ace of hearts. What's the last one? Robbie, what's the last thing? So I'm after. Diamonds. Diamonds, right, should be somewhere in the middle, I think. Somewhere, oops, a bit messy, but somewhere around that. Area. Right, so four aces. Okay, so I've got my four aces, but the one, the ace that's going to do all of the heavy lifting is the ace of spades. Now, the ace of spades is a power card. In some mythologies, in some uh, cultures, it's known as the death card because it apparently brings misfortune, bad luck, all the rest of it. But in card, in card games, it's usually the high, or often the highest value card in the deck. Um, and in card magic, it has power. So I'll give you a very small demonstration of its powers. 
I'm going to need 12 more cards. I'm going to let someone be on which. Give me 12 cards at random. You can take them from anywhere in the deck. You can shuffle it, you can cut it, or just, I just want 12. And I just want you to know. Uh, I want one, 12. Two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven, two, three, nine, ten. That was three, uh, eight, nine, ten. That was plenty to get up to that. Okay, thank you. So we've got a bunch of random cards so you can see that they are all just random. Okay, so I'll put my aces to the back. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make four piles of random cards, okay? And I'll show you what they are, So just so you can see I'm not cheating you. So I've got an eight, a six, and a five. I'm gonna pop those here. I have a 10, an eight, and a queen. I'm gonna pop those right next to them. I've got a king, a seven, and a seven, and they're gonna go here. And then I've got a four, a 10, and a three. And they're going to go down here. Okay. Okay, so that just leaves me, of course, with those aces. Now I'm going to put one of them on each of the piles. And I'm going to keep this pile separate. The reason I've kept that one separate is because that's the one with the power card that I mentioned, the ace of spades. Now I'll just bunch these up together and just give them a quick shuffle. And if you could, uh, Alfie, if you could just riffle them like that as close as you can to that pile, just as close as you can. Oh, lovely. You see that? You see it move? You see? Now, the one thing I didn't tell thank you. The one thing I didn't tell you about the Ace of Spades is, as well as it being a power card, it's also very needy. Um, and the, he only uses his powers for one thing, and that's to bring all of his friends together. Like that. And every time. Thank you. Thank you. Now I've got the aces out, so I'm going to show you another another brief classic of magic. So uh, I have another volunteer here, Dave. Yeah, you can do this. Uh, okay, so uh, I've got, uh, it's a four ace trick. This is a, a card trick by um, uh, another, another you know, bit of a legend in magic, Dr. Dr. Jacob Daly, um, who was a friend of uh, Di Vernon, who I mentioned earlier. They were hung out around, in the same circles around the same time. Um, uh, Dr. Jacob Daly was an amateur magician uh, and a professional plastic surgeon, I believe. Um, so um, I've got an ace of hearts, and I've got the ace of diamonds, I've got the ace of clubs, and I've got the ace of spades. So I'm gonna put the ace of spades behind, so that what I'm doing is I'm sandwiching the red aces between the black aces. Now could you just hold out your hand for me? I'm gonna take the black ace, the, the ace of spades, and put that on your hand there. And then I'll give you the choice. I've got the ace of clubs, and I can either put the ace of clubs on the top, or I can put it on the bottom. Where would you like it to go? On the bottom. So the ace of clubs there. So tell me, where's the ace of spades? Is it on the top or is it on the bottom? The top. No, the ace of spades is on the bottom, the ace of clubs is on the top, and you've got the red aces. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the next trick I'm going to show you is a packet trick. So a packet trick is still a card trick, it's just done with a small packet of cards rather than a full deck. And this is a card trick by uh, Jean Pierre Valerino. Um, another famous magician, and this one uses nine red back playing cards. They're all the same on the back, they're also the same on the front. So, if I show you the fronts, they're all the ten of spades. Every single one, well, every single one except for that jack. Yeah, other than that, they're all the ten of spades. Okay, now that jack I'm going to put down on the table because that in card magic, when we have one card like that that's indifferent in a, in a, in a group of identical cards, we call it a wild card. Wild cards have power, just like the Ace of Spades does. They only have very limited power. All a wild card can do is it can transform other cards. Just by touching them, the wild card can make other cards become the same as itself. You see, where there was one jack, there are now two. I'll take the next ten and just roll it between my hands and just the lightest of touches, and we've got another jack. So now we've got three. Now you can kind of see where this is going, so you need to keep a close eye on this ten here. Because just like all the others, he won't stay around for very long. Mm. Now I've got four. Now for this ten, I'm going to pop him face down in between two jacks. Just like that. Lightest of touches, and now I've got another one. Okay, I'm going to do something very similar this time. I'm going to put this one between face up and face down jack. And again, it doesn't take very long, just a little touch. And we've got more jacks. Not many left now. This one 
is fancy. Mm -hmm. War jacks. Okay, so for this one, put the ten on the table. Put my jacks and another jack. One more. There he is. Uh -huh. And he's now